is it that's causing weight gain? That is the question. Because if you get that question wrong, everything you do after that is wrong. And I think that we have everything all wrong. Well, it's too many calories. That's obvious. We've been told this since we we're in grade two. So this leads to this sort of energy balance paradigm. We know that this kind of paradigm actually doesn't work at all. Studies show it that the failure rate of this sort of eat less, move more is about 99%. So you're virtually guaranteed to fail. Uh, if you look at books like The Handbook of Obesity and so Jocelyn's Diabetes Melodies, which is one of the very authoritative textbooks of medicine, um, it says, well, reduction of caloric intake is the cornerstone of any therapy for obesity. However, they say none of these approaches has any proven merit, right? That is to say, I'm telling you to reduce your calories, but I know it doesn't work. So here's the way we think about obesity. Too much calories causes obesity. That's what everybody says, but that's really just the proximate cause. If you treat that, you're going to say eat less or move more. So this is the first law of thermodynamics, but it's also the unspoken accusation, right? And again, one of these things that I think is one of the most unfair things about obesity is that what we say is that this is the proximate cause, but the ultimate cause is it's your fault. That's the unspoken accusation. You let yourself go. It's your fault. You shouldn't have eaten that bagel, right? It's all treatment is willpower. That's all you need. That's what they say, right? But the model is incorrect, right? It's only correct if this model is correct. There's another model of hormonal obesity, which treats obesity as a hormonal problem. So again, the proximate cause is still too many calories. But what's driving you to have too many calories? Well, it's insulin. So in this case, if you have a hormonal view of obesity, then the treatment is not willpower, right? Because all of a sudden, as a nation, you know, we're 50 years later, we have no willpower. And 50 years before, we had lots of willpower. Like, that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> so the treatment, then, is to lower insulin. I was, I was uh, an exercise enthusiast for years. My first two degrees were exercise physiology. I was interested in how the body responds to exercise. That meant I was fascinated by calories or obsessed or fixated on the idea that when I was talking with clients when I was a personal trainer during my first graduate degree, it was always, you got to eat less, exercise more. And I just saw this was not working or it would work and then it would fail. It would work and then it would fail. And then it was during my PhD where I began to really appreciate that insulin is the key to metabolic function. As insulin goes, so too does body fat. And but suffice it to say, whatever's happening in the body, the body needs energy to get this stuff done, whatever the body needs to do. In order to get that energy, we eat. And we have three main parts of our diet. <clears throat> These main parts are called the three macronutrients. So these three macronutrients, you've, you've seen them before. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. These are the main parts of our diet. Now, to be fair, only two of these are really used as fuel, carbohydrate and fat. Protein, on the other hand, is really more of a building block. Let's put protein to the side for now and focus on carbohydrate and fat, the two sources of energy that our body uses all the time. Whether we use fat or carbohydrate for fuel in our bodies depends on the hormone insulin. 
And insulin is a small little hormone that flows through our blood. And it determines what energy the body is using. If insulin determines what kind of energy we use, well, we want to know what happens to insulin levels when we eat. When someone eats pure carbohydrate, <clears throat> this could be something like bread or cereal or rice. We have a substantial increase in insulin, where insulin can climb 10 times higher than normal, and it can stay elevated for up to four hours. In contrast, if someone eats fat in their diet, fat alone has a negligible effect on insulin. If insulin is low and the person were to eat a source of pure fat, the insulin won't even change. It just keeps moving along. Now, we have the two fuels, fat and carbohydrate. When insulin is elevated, the body makes a decision. And at this point, it shifts, and it starts to use most of its, or get more of its energy from carbohydrate. So basically, the body goes into sugar burning mode. It starts to burn sugar, or blood sugar. <clears throat> In contrast, if insulin levels are low, now the body switches, and then it starts to burn more fat for fuel. It has shifted its energy source. It's kind of like the body is a hybrid Sonata. It has an option. The engine can use two fuels. And so in this case, again, if insulin is low, it shifts our metabolic engines to use fat for fuel and less carbohydrate or less blood sugar. <clears throat> now, within the body, Again, to really bring this together, elevated insulin means carbohydrate burning or sugar burning. And if we're burning more sugar, that means we're burning less fat. And if we aren't burning fat, then the amount of fat that we have on our bodies goes up because insulin won't let us burn fat for fuel if it's elevated. And so high insulin means a shift to carbohydrate burning and less fat burning. But of course, the solution is quite simple. If we want to burn more fat, if we have more fat than we want, if we want to use this fat for fuel that is on our body, if we can lower our insulin levels, well, then we start using fat for fuel. It becomes the main source of energy for the body and then the fat that we have stored starts to be used, and of course, that means our fat tissue starts to shrink. So here's the overall perspective. High insulin means high carbohydrate use. The body starts to burn sugar. And if insulin is too high for too long, it creates something called insulin resistance. The reason I care about insulin resistance and the reason I want you to care about it, even though you might not care about insulin resistance right now, it's because you don't know it like I do. Insulin resistance can cause almost every chronic disease. If you know someone who has high blood pressure, hypertension, it's probably because they're insulin resistant. If you know someone who has Alzheimer's disease, dementia, when the brain doesn't work as well, it could be that the brain has become insulin resistant. So if you fear chronic disease, you should be fearing insulin resistance. Now, what happens when someone eats carbohydrate? Of course, insulin climbs. And that means the body starts to burn carbohydrate for fuel. That makes sense. If you eat the carbohydrate, the body wants to use carbohydrate. And insulin is what tells the body to do that. In contrast, if someone eats fat in their diet, fat alone helps insulin stay low, 
And so what fuel does the body use? Well, in the body, we'll use fat for fuel. Unfortunately, what happens more and more today is that a person eats more than a little bit of carbohydrate. They eat so much refined starch and sugar all the time that it pushes the insulin levels up all the time. And insulin essentially gets stuck in a high position. And if we keep insulin high, it's, it's stuck. We're eating carbohydrate. The moment the person wakes up and every two hours later, they eat more refined starch and more sugar. So insulin is elevated almost every moment of the day. So insulin gets stuck in a high situation. That means the body gets stuck in sugar burning mode. Because insulin is chronically elevated, we're never letting the body switch to burning fat for fuel. We're stuck as sugar burners, where we don't want to be. And of course, if we're only burning sugar in our blood for fuel, that means our body fat is never getting used for fuel. And so what starts to happen? Well, it starts to climb. We aren't able to use this fat for fuel. And of course, the solution in this case is simply to start to reduce the carbohydrates. So if we take away some of the carbohydrate, we allow the insulin to come down, and that means we can start using body fat for fuel.